Eminence has been designing and manufacturing custom loudspeakers and high-frequency devices for OEM customers since 1966. Our engineers work closely with our customers' product development teams to build high-performance audio products for many of the industry's leading brands and have built a reputation for high quality at a fair price. Hello, my name is Tom James and uh, I'm the product design manager here at Eminence Speaker. I've uh, been at this uh, workplace for 23 years. We have a, a department that consists of a couple of lab technicians, two design engineers, a, a CAD tech, and a, a customer service representative. We handle uh, all the custom designs and catalog designs for uh, Eminence product here. And uh, hang with me here and we'll walk you through the department so you can see what we do. Here in the design lab, we put together the original engineering samples. Uh, based upon the customer specifications and sometimes through a um, competitor's driver that's been provided. The samples are uh, assembled and then there's some drying time and then we move on to the testing segment of the process. Here in the lab we measure each uh, engineering sample with computerized test equipment. We compare uh, the quantified data with the customer's request and then submit the data uh, to see if a, an additional sample iteration is required in the process. Using a non-contact laser, we uh, quantify the high power characteristics of a loudspeaker and can compare those to those modeled in our design engineering software. High frequency devices are modeled using acoustic simulation software. The geometries of those devices can then be transferred to 3D CAD software for a production of tooling and uh, other related parts. Once the computer-aided drawings are generated for a particular model, uh, complex shapes can then be realized here using an in-house uh, rapid prototype machine. In a, a joint venture with a software manufacturer, we offer Eminence Designer, a, a software program for uh, basically designing the uh, low-frequency component of a system. Our design efforts cover a diverse range of products. Beyond woofers, tweeters, and high-frequency horns, we are in the process of bringing a totally new passive speaker protection device to market called Defend. The final step in the design process is to validate the design to find the maximum power handling of, of each speaker. Uh, every transducer is subjected to a high-power simulated music spectrum until it breaks. I have worked here 18 years. I am the supervisor on the compression driver line. We have 11 employees in this department. All of our compression drivers use titanium. Here we start with the roll of titanium and our blanking press. Next we use heat station to start our forming process. This is our final step in forming our titanium diaphragms. Just like we do for loudspeakers, we also wind our own voice pulls for compression drivers. After a quick baking process, we dress the voice coil and iron the tinsel leaves. Here we assemble the voice coil and titanium diaphragm together, and then goes through another quick baking process. The assembly then goes on a locator ring. Here is where we assemble the magnetic motor. We start with the back plate, the magnet, and we finish with the top plate. We install a phasing plug cut to size, then we assemble the diaphragm and cap. For the final step, we use three screws to assemble the cap and diaphragm. Then we solder leads. After the driver is magnetized, we perform a series of quality control tests. Then each driver is packed for distribution. My name is Michelle Gambrell. I am the supervisor in the voice call department. I have been with the company for 16 plus years. 
I currently have 17 employees working under me. At Eminence, we manufacture many sizes of voice coils, ranging from one inch to four inch. The first step in making a coil is the winding process. It involves wrapping wire and a former material on a mandrel to keep it round during the entire process. We use copper and copper clad aluminum wire in various sizes. We use Kapton, Nomex, and paper former materials. We bake the coil next to cure the adhesive used for coating the wire. This machine is used to remove the mandrel as it is no longer needed. It is called the punch out. With this machine, we then apply an assurance bead of glue on the top and the bottom of the winding. We have recently added ovens and ventilation, which allows us to batch bake our coils. This double baking process adds quality and reliability to our voice coils. For added strength, we add beryllium or copper strips to many of our coals, which also requires a wire cleaning process. Next, we apply a paper or Tufkin collar to protect the wire that goes from the winding to the tinsel leaves. This is called an auto splice machine where we add tinsel lead to finish the coal. The final step is our quality inspection. This is where we check the DC resistance and overall quality of the coal. My name is Garrett Gambrell. I'm supervisor over the press room and paint line. I've been here two and a half years and currently have 14 employees. We run a variety of baskets here, uh, two styles, one being cast aluminum, ranging from 10 inch to 18 inch, the other being stamped steel, six and a half inch to 15 inch. We also have a variety of cores, two styles, powdered metal and steel, ranging from one inch to over four inches, and vented and solid. Now our solid cores, we weld to a back plate, and our vented cores, we stake to the back plates. We run a top plate here that we also weld to a basket, and in the case of aluminum cast baskets, we stake using drive screws a top plate to the basket. All of this is done prior to paint. We run a variety of size of plates, three 600 inches all the way to seven and a half. We make all those in-house on our two blanking presses. Now let me show you a little bit how we do that. We have one 300 ton mechanical blanking press here. We blank our top plates and back plates there ranging from three 600 to five and three quarter inch plates. We also have a 600 ton hydraulic press that also blanks our top and back plates that are seven inch and seven and a half inch. We have two 300 ton mechanical coining presses. Uh, when we coin a plate, we are removing a burr from the OD of the plate, as well as uh, getting the plate flat within our tolerances. We also make our own terminal boards in-house. We blank our lugs on one machine and assemble the boards on another. Once our parts are either welded or staked together, they go through our electrostatic or e-coat paint process. Here we have a monorail system with each rack capable of holding 12 parts. They go through a series of wash tanks, our paint bath, a final rinse, and a series of ovens to cure the paint. They are later removed from the line and staged for final assembly. My name is Jason Stanley. I'm the production manager here at Eminent Speaker. I've worked here for 18 years. I'm going to walk you through the final production area and the packaging department, which employ 35 people. The first step of the round table is taking the basket and top plate and attaching a terminal to the basket. There are two methods of attaching the terminal. One is a glue on and a rivet. Then we put the basket top plate on a centering gauge and can apply an optional rear gasket. In this area, this is where we assemble the magnet, core, and back plate with a glue and activator. 
This machine is a vacuum to remove debris from the magnetic gap. This station is where we insert a mylar gauge into the coil to set the height and apply a bead of glue to attach the spider. At this station, we apply a bead of glue to the foot of the spider. As we install it into the speaker, it's attached to the coil and the basket. At this station, we apply a magnet ID label, set the cone, and then press it so the surround is attached to the basket. At this station, we apply a bead of glue to attach the cone, spider, and coil. Then we put it into the spray booth to accelerate the curing of the glue. At this station, he threads the leads through the cone and the terminal. At this point, we can remove the mylar shim and dress the leads. Next, we apply an edge treatment. On cloth surrounds, it seals the edge, and on full paper cones, as in a guitar speaker, it would change the tonality. This machine applies a bead of glue to install the dust cap, along with a bead of glue to prevent metal buzzing. After the dust cap is installed, we send a speaker through our C-Core magnetizer. The next station is where we install and press our front gaskets. Our last process on the final assembly line is where we crimp the tinsel to the terminal. Then we snip the excess tinsel lead and dot the terminal. At the end of the production line, there is an oven to help dry the glue on the speakers so we can test every speaker that we make. Many of the speakers we make require a magnet boot and a backplate label. Most of the products that we manufacture for distribution are single packed on our box line. I'm Glenn Simpson. I've been here nearly 25 years. I am in charge of incoming QC, outgoing QA, our returns department, our U.S. distribution warehouse, as well as our packing department. This is around 17 people. Eminent Speaker is an ISO 9001-2008 certified company ensuring all products and services consistently conform to our highest quality standards. We dimensionally check a sampling of each shipment of cones we receive, OD trim, height, apex dips are all examples of dimensions on our prints. But we also check resonance readings of the cone in free air. This doesn't always match what is on print for a completed driver, but in QC we are looking for consistency as much as anything. If we feel the cone is way off, we will get with a lab to build a test speaker. We also check a sampling of the received spiders. Mainly a means of R&D, the true machine checks deflection of the spiders. We save this compliance data, but are mainly interested in deflection readings, which is the amount of movement a spider makes under a given amount of force or weight. We also do occasional checks on metal parts, but the true heart and soul of the speaker is the cone. Whenever we have engineered a new spec, we place it on retest for a while to make sure it won't be problematic. Retest is just what the name suggests. We are again sweeping the speaker as we do at the end of the production line, but we now have let the driver set for at least eight hours, so all of the glue joints and treatments are nearly fully cured or at least on their way. Some customers actually require us to check their product again after it is dried. In some instances, we are also asked to check frequency response, which we do on either our NTI system or our Clio system. 
Once through retest and frequency response testing, the speakers are ready to be packaged and shipped.